You want to know how to become a pilot, but you're not sure about the expenses or passing the medical exam? Well, stick around until the end and I'll show you three different ways how you can become a pilot fast and in a way that'll save you lots of money. Coming up. So many of you have been asking me how I became from a student pilot to a private pilot to a commercial pilot and now I'm a CFI all in such a short period of time. I mean, like, what are you like? rich or something? Uh, no. Hello everyone, Ty Jones here as your error nerd and I want to end the rumors and stop the negativity that you may have heard about starting pilot training. So in the next few minutes I'm going to walk you through step by step how I became a pilot as well as some other helpful tips on how anybody can be a pilot even if you think you may not be able to pass the medical exam. Hint, hint, you can still be a pilot. But first I'd like to kindly ask that if, 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 and that's a big if. This video is beneficial to you in any way, or if you think that this video can benefit other pilots or other future pilots, go ahead and hit the like button because it does something to the YouTube algorithm that will make this video more viewable to the future pilots or current pilots that you think that this video will be more beneficial to. So you can simply help them out by liking this video. And lastly, if you want to help this channel continue to grow, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified every new video that comes out. And go ahead and check out the links in the description below because they are two items that you may want to have for your flight training. Trust me. All right, let's get started. All right, so first things first. One of the things that you have to do in order to be a pilot is to do what you're doing right now, which is educating yourself. Whether if it's a YouTube video, whether if it's books, whether if you're asking a great mentor of yours, you're already ahead of the game by educating yourself. Number two, don't get caught up in the rumors. If somebody's telling you, oh, well, it's going to cost you 8000 9000 do your research. Again, you can do this by educating yourself just like I did. I've heard the same rumors when I first started. So don't get caught up in the rumors. The third thing that I want to mention is what kind of training that you're going to be going into. Are you going to be going to part 61 or are you going to be going into part 141? Later on in this video, I'm going to go into the pros and cons of each but I will tell you from personal experience, my initial training was part 61 and I'll tell you why later in this video. And the fourth thing is know that you can do this. If you don't believe that you can be a pilot, then you're already starting off on the wrong foot. You have to understand that the pilots that are flying in the air right now, they started in the same situation as you. They did not know anything about aviation at all. They had to study. They had to read the books. They had to go online and they possibly did hours and hours of research on YouTube or maybe the internet and other, and other websites. But you have to believe that you can do this just like they did. I will tell you personally that I know that you can. And then lastly, once you find out that this is what you really want to do, nothing is going to stop you. Why? Because you are a human being and you are the most powerful creature on this planet. If you really want something, then mountains will move out of your way to make sure that you get what you want. It doesn't matter what it is. It's been historically proven. Know that you are more powerful than you think. If you really put your mind to it, then you're going to get what you want. Regardless of how much something costs, no matter how hard you have to work, if you really want something, you're going to put forth the effort in whatever it takes to get it. And then when that day comes that you have it, you're going to say, yes, this is what I did to get it. And you know what? I'm going to try to help other people to get it too by coming out with a YouTube video and I'm going to name it how to become a pilot. Oh, oh shoot. This is, this is what I'm doing right now. All right, cool. <laughs> Moving on. All right. So the second thing you have to do is you have to decide of what kind of pilot that you want to be. Normally what you'll hear is student pilot, private pilot, commercial pilot, airline pilot, and flight instructor. What you have to realize is there's lots more kinds of pilots out there for you that you can go for. For example, 
There's a sport pilot that you can actually go for. Glider or balloon pilot, recreational pilot. There's other things that you can actually do to pursue in getting your pilot license to get up in the air. And I'm going to tell you, hint, hint, not all of these pilots require a medical certificate which we'll go into later on in this video but I'm not gonna go into every single one of these so this video won't be four hours long what I'll be going into is first the private pilot so let's discuss about the how to get to a private pilot first you have to be a student pilot and you can reference this by part 6183 and I'm gonna go on the differences between the powered flight and non powered flight so let's start with a powered flight Powered flight, you have to be at least 16 years old to start as a student pilot. Also, you have to be able to read and speak English. And lastly, you have to submit the application via IACRA. That's a website that you go to to actually apply for any kind of pilot certificate that you're going to be applying for. Now let's go into the non-powered flight. This type is a little bit different. You don't have to be 16. You can actually get your non-powered flight student pilot certificate at the age of 14 years old and of course the other ones is the same you have to be able to read and speak English and submit your application via IACRA let's go into the private pilot basics how old do you have to be in order to get your private pilot certificate these references you can find I'll list them up here above at 61103 61105 61107 and 61109 which says that you have to be at least 17 years old in order to get your private pilot certificate now what you have to do to get your private pilot certificate is you need a minimum of 40 hours of flight time and within those 40 hours of flight time you need the following so 20 hours of those hours with a flight instructor you have to fly at least 20 of those 40 hours with a person sitting on the right seat 10 of those flight hours guess what you're flying solo you're flying by yourself now there's other requirements too but I'm not going to get into the details but you can find more uh, under 61109 what happens after you get all that let's say you get all this done um, next what you have to do is you have to pass a FAA written exam now I'm going to tell you there's one website for this that I will share with you all later in the video of a completely 100% free website that gives you word for word test questions of the FAA written exam now there's many others out there like Shepard Air but uh, there's one that I went to in particular that I want to share with you that helped me pass my FAA private pilot written exam absolutely free. Now what? what's next? Next is going to be your FAA check ride. So you're going to be flying with a DPE which, which is for a designated pilot examiner. So they understand what you're going through. They understand how hard you have worked to get up to this point. Furthermore, if your flight instructor submitted you, gave you all the endorsements necessary to get you to this point for the FAA checkride, that means you are ready. This is your moment to show off what you know to the DPE. And if you're not sure how to be that confident, let me show you the things that I did to pass my initial private pilot check ride. What I did was I wanted to save the most money possible, so I went through a flight school that's part 61 in a Cessna 152. I'll tell you, 61 in my experience at the time was much cheaper than 141. 141 is a lot more structured, a more dedicated syllabus, and I'll get into the more details and the differences between part 61 and part 141. But I wanted to do my training in the cheapest way possible. It doesn't matter if you complete all your training on a 172 or in 172 SP with a G1000 versus a six pack. It doesn't matter. Once you get your private pilot certificate, it's a private pilot certificate. There's nothing that says, oh, private pilot certificate in a G1000 aircraft or a glass cockpit. It doesn't say anything like that. So if you want to save as much money as you can, get it in the Cessna 152 or the 150. Secondly, I did lots and lots and lots of online study. So let me tell you, I have never been on YouTube so much in my entire life when I was studying for my private 
pilot exam. I think I've actually learned more on YouTube than I actually did in high school or in college. <laughs> There's so much you can learn on YouTube and it's free. Take advantage of that. It is so beneficial to have such free training and such a vast variety of information on one site which is YouTube. I cannot stress that enough. King Schools has all kinds of information. If you go on, if you just Google King Schools Private Pilot Written Test Prep, this is exactly the website that I went to when I was studying for my private pilot uh, written exam. Now I went on this website and this was just a random Google search. I didn't actually type King Schools, I just typed in uh, Private Pilot Written Exam Prep and then King Schools came up. So I clicked that and you can literally customize your own written exam prep and this website is completely free you can go on this website you can click or unclick the subjects that you want to study on let's say you haven't studied on weather so you can unclick that and you can test yourself on the other subjects you can range your questions from 10 to 60 and you can take these 60 questions or you can take 10, 10 of those 60 questions. Um, you can go ahead and skip down all the way down to the end and you can hit submit. And then when you hit submit, it will tell you how well you did. And for the questions that you didn't answer, it will give you the correct answer for the questions that you didn't, that you didn't, um, that you didn't answer. So some will tell you to pass your written you have to memorize all these questions and memorize, memorize, and memorize, and then that's how you that's how you can pass your written. I kind of am guilty on that. I actually that's how I passed my commercial. I actually went to Shepherd Air, and I can show you that website here. Uh, if you go to Shepherd Air, they literally have questions on the for the exam prep word for word depending on whichever written exam that you sign up for so for example the instrument rating written exam takes a hundred questions out of a pool of around two thousand questions plus so yes you'll be on Shepherd Air you'll be studying for two thousand questions and when you take the test you'll be taking a test with a hundred questions of any of those two thousand questions that you just studied and I believe for the private pilot exam, I believe it's uh, maybe six to eight hundred questions. And the exam for the private pilot is around sixty questions. So yes, you'll be studying a lot more questions than you'll actually be examined for, but it's well worth the forty 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 five dollars that Shepherd Air asks for. Another thing that I recommend you read up on is Michael Hayes Oral Exam Prep Guide books. I read each and every one of these books at least three times before my oral. At least three times. Um, these books have every single question that the DPE can ask you with the answers, with explanations of those answers. So I highly recommend you look at these exam oral guides and uh, they will definitely help you on the orals. I was literally my own ground school. I wasn't going to pay $500 or $600 for a ground school when I can just go on YouTube and, and get the same exact experience for free. So I literally was my own ground school. I made flashcards. I went to Shepherd Air. I studied my far aim. I read the books uh, for the P-Hack and I went to YouTube and I went to the King Schools. I highly recommend you do the same thing. It kind of brings me back to saying if you really want something with any kind of limitations, it doesn't matter what kind of limitations you have you will get it. So the end result on all of this hard work that I have done, I have got my private pilot certificate in 45 hours and I spent a total of $4,700. That includes the medical exam, that includes the flight instructor, that includes the aircraft rentals, and that includes the FAA checkride fee doing based off of what you see in front of you. I worked and studied my rear end off. I hope I can say that on YouTube, but whatever. 
but yes I really wanted it and I did whatever I had to do in order to get it with the budget that I had at the time that's the first way how you can become a pilot okay and now for the second way how you can get your license fast and saving money is once you get your private pilot or any other certificate I recommend that you go through a 141 flight school program why because you can actually get your commercial license much quicker than you can doing it via part 61 now you can get these references on part 141 appendix C if you want to do your instrument training which I highly recommend you do your instrument training via 141 because the 141 flight school program is a lot more streamlined it's more structured it has a nice streamlined syllabus that you can follow so I highly recommend you get your instrument training if you're interested through 141 and lastly if you look at appendix D then these are the requirements for your commercial pilot rating if you choose to do so part 61 requires at least 250 hours to get your commercial pilot rating now I got my commercial pilot rating at about 170 hours ish now, I did do my instrument in between my private uh, and my commercial plus a lot of other rentals so it is doable that you can get your commercial pilot rating even sooner than 170 hours through a part 141 flight school now you can actually get it even sooner if you skip the instrument rating you can go straight from private pilot to commercial rating now there are some limitations if you don't have your instrument rating but I recommend that you do it this way because you're going to save a lot more money if you go the 141 route for your commercial pilot rating and you'll get it much much faster and you'll save a lot of money by doing it and finally the third way I will show you how to get yourself in the air so here's the references 6121C and 61303 plus and beyond so 303 you can just keep on reading in the far aim and you can see the rest of the regulations here so here I want to touch mainly on medical certificates whether if you need a medical certificate or not there's lots of people that say you need a medical certificate in order to be up in the air and I want to be able to tell you that is not the case so worried about passing the medical no need to fear you, all you need is a driver's license for some of these certificates and this is straight out of 61.303 you can fly any light sport aircraft which you hold the endorsements required for its category and class so if you want to fly a sport cruiser or any other kind of light sport aircraft you don't even need a medical all you need is a driver's license so no need to fear you can still fly there's so many people out there who saying oh I wish I could be a pilot but it was always my dream but uh, there's no way I'm ever gonna pass the medical so I'm not even gonna try all you need is a driver's license but hey let's say you don't even have a driver's license guess what you can still be a pilot you can fly gliders and you can fly balloons so according to 61303 if you have a sport pilot certificate which doesn't even require medical you can still fly any light sport glider or balloon which you hold the endorsements required for its category and class and that's strictly out of the federal aviation regulations that's strictly from the FAA so you have nothing to worry about furthermore on top of that there's something else other than a flight medical that's equivalent to a flight medical the FAA decided hey if you can drive a a you know a big old escalated SUV with a driver's license then you should probably be able to fly a little airplane so what they incorporated was a basic med which we'll go into shortly here pretty much I'm not going to go into too much detail into this but if you want more details you can see the advisor circular 68-1A and that'll give you more nitty-gritty details but the requirements for a basic med is you do need to have a driver's license um, if you held a medical a medical certificate after July 15 2006 then hey you're good you qualify for a basic med again all these details are in advisor circular 68-1a um, on top of that you do have to complete a comprehensive medical exam checklist uh, for short CMEC from your state licensed physician family doctor so if you have a care doctor um, you can actually get this CMEC 
uh, on, the, on the FAA website, which is pretty much guidelines from the FAA so your family doctor can go off these guidelines and then he can say, okay, yay, yay or nay. You can check off the necessary uh, checklist items and then he can go ahead and check you off for the uh, comprehensive medical exam checklist. Um, this will have to be done every 48 calendar months in order to remain current and you can get this CMEC on the AOPA website. Um, just go on the online medical self-assessment course on AOPA and then you sign up. If you haven't signed up before you can go go ahead and just register. Um, just make sure you don't have any DUIs or anything like that because they will check you on the on their registry. And if you do have any DUIs, there's probably extra steps that you have to follow. So just make sure you don't have any DUIs. And you do have to make sure you do this every 24 calendar months. So this will have to be renewed every 24 calendar months. And you will have to do the CMEC every 48 months from your primary care doctor. And that's pretty much the basics on the basic med. And finally, what everybody has been waiting for, ways to save money, ways how I have saved money, how I was able to get my private pilot certificate with only $4,700 or less, since I just rounded it off. Um, so starting with, don't buy Bose A20 headsets for your first pair. I mean, there's so many other options like Craigslist, there's Amazon, there's eBay, there's the flight school community. I'm pretty sure any kind of flight school you go to, there's going to be some kind of email or some kind of messaging system electronically that they post every day within the flight school community. Use that to your advantage to save money. There's no sense in spending brand new equipment items if it's your very first item, Bose A20 headsets, maybe you can get that when you're about to be a flight instructor, when you have your training done, but use that money toward your A20s, toward your medical exam, or your written test, or for your DPE check ride. That's where you want to use that money to. Don't buy A20s for your very first pair. For your flight school books, buy them used. Why would you buy brand new books? and you can get the same information from the same book that's used. It makes no sense to buy anything brand new. Find a student pilot that has recently graduated, got their private pilot certificate, and be like, hey, can I use your book? I mean, we do the same thing with college books. But that's advantage of saving money. It's either that, or you're gonna buy something brand new. And then lastly, if you truly want to be a pilot there is nothing stopping you you will find ways you will be creative you will think outside the box you will use common sense you will do whatever needs to be done in order to achieve your dreams of being a pilot so that is something you do not have to worry about if you really want to be a pilot well then I will tell you one thing you will be a pilot Regardless of your limitations, regardless of even if you have any limitations, you will be able to find a way to be a pilot. So that's it for today. Again, I hope if anything that you were able to get something from my experience that I shared with you today. Go ahead and put your questions and comments below. Let's start a conversation. If you have different experience than I did, please share them. But until the next video, I want to say as always, keep flying. Keep learning and always have fun. I'll see you guys next time.